Welcome everyone. Thanks so much for joining. Today we have a real treat. We are going to be talking about healing stress with Su Ping Negrin. She is a Chinese medicine practitioner and has been practicing on the Upper East Side of New York City for 20 years, but she also has many patients all over the place that she sees virtually. Her approach is based on the belief that maximum health is best achieved by empowering one's internal healing energy. And I couldn't agree more. Sue helps you balance your energy flow through acupuncture, herbs, nutrition, and Qigong massage and meditation. She looks at each client uniquely and not only treats symptoms, but helps clients understand their body to achieve better health. Su Ping was born in Hong Kong and raised in a traditional Chinese household with an all in an all-American suburb. She, this paved the way to developing her unique style of integrating Chinese medicine with her Western education, providing a well-rounded expertise that is not readily found in modern day medical practitioners. This is amazing because I feel like in the world of Chinese medicine and natural medicine in general, we need a bridge from East to West because there are a lot of people who could benefit so much uh, from this, mo these modalities, this form of medicine, but that it's just so foreign. Um, you know, the, the lingo, the Chinese medicine lingo is used. People don't really understand it. Doctors don't know what to say about it. So it's really nice to have someone like you in the profession that is forming this bridge from east to west and helping people really understand. Now, after you had suddenly developed insomnia and suffered from 10 years of unrelenting stress, you recognized that balancing the energy in the physical body was not enough. And that's when you discovered Qigong. Can you tell us a bit about Qigong? Um, yes, absolutely. So Qigong is an amazing um, form of exercise and meditation. It's really a combination of the two where you connect to the energies um, in your body that Christine, I know you know well, and I know well, because that's what we treat when we do acupuncture. We're actually tapping in and clearing the chi and the meridians. Um, but these exercises help you to tap in to it yourself through simple movements and breathing. And then it also connects you to the chi outside, because as we know, the energy doesn't just live inside of you, but it lives outside in the form of the sun, the air, you know, moonlight, all of that water, all of that has energy. So it really uh, encompasses that connection throughout. And that's why it's so incredible our connection to our internal self and basically the universe at large, it, it, you know, how the Taoists look at things, right? Um, so let's hear a bit for our listeners being um, a, a group that is, you know, on the journey to conception. You yourself went through three years of IVF and other therapies. Tell us the background on that. Yeah, that's actually quite an interesting story because um, that's what solidified that I needed to be in this business because um, uh, my husband had cancer twice. And after the second bout of cancer, he went through a stem cell transplant and it depleted everything, including his sperm. Um, and when we decided we wanted to have kids, um, he didn't have sperm. So we had to use his bank sperm before he did the chemo. Um, and we went through, you know, the, the, the sperm wasn't quite up to standard, um, but we had to use that. And we went through IVF, um, which is, I think, the second or third modality that we had gone to. Um, and that was a bit of a rough go for me because we did it and was actually successful, but not quite. And the entire time they kept telling me my numbers are low, my progesterone is low, and they couldn't understand. First, it was my HCG was very low, wasn't quite, you know, uh, developing. And then I was in probably about every week for shots and progesterone shots. And I was just constantly monitored because they were afraid that I was going to lose baby. And they said, oh, by week 12, the placenta is going to take over and your progesterone will be fine. And it wasn't. And that continues. So they continue to monitor me. And then at around week 20, we lost the, uh, the baby. Oh that God. was so sorry. Really? Yeah. It was really quite traumatic for me. Mm -hmm. um, and that was actually when I was a computer consultant. Mm -hmm. So then I 
took a step back and said, you know, I really, I need to figure out what I want to do for the rest of my life. And that's how I stumbled onto Chinese medicine. Mm -hmm. I walked into an acupuncturist's office, who was actually the president of our school, Tri-State at the time, Mark Seam. And it was, you know how you walk in and you just feel like, oh, something just clicked, right? I was like, wow. And I went home to my husband. I said, this is what I think I need to do. So we're going to fast forward a little bit. At the end of the first year, we still were trying to conceive. And uh, we had a, um, a Chinese medicine gynecologist who came into the States and she was teaching us our ground rounds. Her name was Dr. Yi Tan Ni, and unfortunately she's no longer alive. Um, but at the end of it, it was sometime in like uh, April, we spoke and she said, why don't you come to San Diego to, you know, to work with me for, you know, a week. So my husband and I flew out there, it was Memorial Day weekend. And we, she treated us for about four days. At, we went home and she said, okay, this is how you treat your husband. Cause uh, my husband was obviously the issue. Let's give him herbs. You'll take herbs and all that. That was Memorial Day weekend. And by June, I was pregnant. After three years of doing everything, IVF, antibiotic treatments, I mean, you name it. And, and so everyone, wait, were you pregnant naturally via this treatment? You didn't have to do IVF again? Zero. Oh, so naturally. They, wow. And so even after the chemotherapy, his sperm was revitalized. Yeah. Wow. And revitalized healthily. Wow. That's amazing. Yeah. yeah. So... Um, so that's how, you know, we call her my, our miracle baby. And then mm. we had two more after that, um, completely naturally. Oh my God. Um, wow. Yeah. Yeah. It was really incredible story. And that's when I said, wow, clearly I'm in the right path. Mm -hmm. Totally. Yeah. That's really reaffirming. And, mm -hmm. and, you know, just also, you know, you having been able to have that opportunity to tune into what you, you know, talk about is like your own innate healing ability needed to be nurtured basically towards conception that is amazing okay so fast forward you mm -hmm. were telling me offline about your second chapter and the words you used were my physical strength was not enough to anchor my hectic lifestyle what does that mean um, yeah that's great so fast forward um between my first and second daughter so about two years and when I look back, I will tell you, I think that it, it started after 9-11, believe it or not. But obviously, we know stress doesn't all of a sudden come on to you. It is something that's built up over time. And I realized that 9-11 was just kind of the trigger because I lost my milk right at 9-11 and I didn't know what happened. And, and, and it, stress is so interesting. I didn't have anybody close to me that was, you know, um, that perished at 9-11, but um, obviously it was a shock of being a New Yorker and I recovered, but then about six months later, I lost my sleep and it really felt like it came out of the blue. And I honestly didn't know what was going on. I spent, oh my God, two, three years just doing everything, acupuncture, herbs, following healers, and really nothing was really able to, uh, recoup that. And at some point I, worked with a healer, I got it back. And then I discovered Robert Pang, who is a Qigong uh, healer. And this is fast forwarding about eight years, nine years. Uh, my sleep was at that point, maybe about 50% better, but not completely. Uh, and this is very difficult, Christina, what you don't understand is that I incredibly healthy person physically always been blessed with amazing physical health. So this was something so out of the blue, I didn't know how to access it. And then as remarkable as my fertility story, after I started studying with Robert Pang, and I would say it took about one to two weeks where I just decided I'm going to practice Qigong, my sleep went from 50% to 100. It was really that quick. And I thought, wow. wow. So was powerful. I changing? It was powerful. So mm -hmm. was I changing the energy and tapping into the energy on my physical level? Absolutely, because Qigong is so amazing about that. But there was something else that it was opening up for me. And it was opening up my spiritual, mental, and emotional mm -hmm. center. Mm -hmm. And I think you probably know in, in Chinese medicine, you can, of course, access the mental layer, right, through needles. Right? I'm sure we've all had experiences where I put a needle in and somebody releases their emotions, right? Mm -hmm. And that's great. But what happened was the continual Qigong 
helped me to continue to tap into what was it about my mental, um, my mental uh, health that was preventing me mm-hmm. from continuing to, you know, improve the, the, the balance in my life. And I think it was really, I think that's what Qigong has really done for me because it opens me up. It really aligned my mental, uh, emotional and spiritual with my physical health. Mm-hmm. And it gave me clarity. Mm-hmm. It gave me, you know, it wasn't just about getting my physical health. It made me realize that I was just basically running on empty. Mm-hmm. And I didn't realize it because my physical health is so strong, mm-hmm. but my mental, emotional gave. Well, I, it's funny because I, I, you know, I t- we live in New York and we see New Yorker clientele and, and this is a strong willed bunch. Like I, I, the amount of people that I think are running on, you know, like they're burning an empty gas tank kind of thing, but like so strong minded, so type A um, that it's just like they keep going. And, you know, what you're describing is, is sort of like, it sounds like, you know, 9-11 baby, like maybe, you know, the history of what you'd already endured with your husband and fertility and other life circumstances, you kind of blew a fuse and, and it was really hard to reset. Like you, you did everything that you could possibly find. And it sounds like Qigong was that thing that quickly helped you kind of repattern internally and even more powerful is the fact that it's something that you could do yourself. Like you have the power, you're not even relying on an outside force anymore. Um, So I'm so excited to hear more about, you know, your work with people and how you teach them that. You really summed that up very well, Christina, really. You summed that, yeah, I blew the fuse and, um, and it did help me repattern. And I do want to let you know also in the interim, I'd started a new practice. Mm-hmm. So I'd put my shingles up, right? And um, so, and as a new mom, mm-hmm. we're just giving, right? We're mm-hmm. giving so much of ourselves, right? Physically everything. Mm-hmm. And, and, and that's so interesting to say type A, I'm definitely type A. <laughs> so. <laughs> oh, I, I know. <laughs> <laughs> and that type A just kept driving me and driving me. And mm-hmm. also, you know, what's interesting, I thought about this a lot. At the time, I think people were like, you are just such a super mom. Like, you're just so amazing. And I think I fed into that, right? I fed into that super mom and I just was like, oh yeah, I'm super mom. I'm just going to keep going. Mm-hmm. And my body just, you know, was able to sustain it. But it was really my mind and my emotions just let go. Yeah. And uh, there's a cost, um, you know, that, that I think we're not aware of until we hit a wall and, you know, we have desire for something that we're not getting really. Right. Cause we'll kind of keep like bulldozing until something stops us. And, you know, for the listeners here, the fertility journey is, is probably the thing um, causing and, or sorry, presenting an opportunity to reassess, to stop and reassess and, and take inventory of our lives and, you know, maybe what there is to learn and integrate and, you know, how to grow into a more receptive uh, state to, to conceive a healthy pregnancy. So, you know, we're talking about the type A personality and, and like, why do you think that this stress response and this like, you know, go, 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 like, why do you think it's such a pervasive issue in today's society? Um, Well, I think two things. One is that because we're on the go, we are so disconnected as to what is going on inside of us because all we're thinking about is, I mean, we're depleting our young, right? We're just going and going with all up in our head that we're, we've stopped listening to what our body is telling us. I think that's clearly what happened to me. I was so fixed on this super mom, everything's great, gotta take care of my kids that I ignored myself. Mm -hmm. And I think that what the Qigong is able to do um, or any of this introspection or energy work is it got me out of my head Mm -hmm. and back into my body. Mm -hmm. So I really started listening and because we know the body shows us everything. Right. Mm-hmm. The body's the last stage. That's it manifests there. 
Mm-hmm. But can we get to a point before we allow it to manifest, right? And that's where really I think a lot of this meditative and um, work is so helpful. It just slows us down, gets us back into our body and says, yes, you can't stop going. You need to make changes. Um, and, you know, I, I found that even with like people with cancer, actually mm-hmm. quite a bit. I, I support people with cancer. And one of the things that... Um, that what led me down this path is I realized that it's great to heal the physical body, but unless we change the patterns that created this problem, we're going to continue to cycle through illness. And even if, you know, even if you heal one thing, Mm -hmm. what's interesting is that the body makes pathways into other areas in your body. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's so So. interesting. It's so interesting that you say um, repeating the pattern. Cause that's what it feels like. It just feels like it's like this imprint, like that we got like stuck in this pattern. And whenever like the, the stress response is activated, we keep going back into that place. And, and it feels like we're stuck on this hamster wheel and how do you get off? Like, how do you break the cycle? And, uh, and, you know, I think that a lot of people want to, but they don't know where to start and meditation can seem very intimidating. And, you know, to be, you know, I have patients that literally say like, I don't want to be alone with my thoughts. So we can dive into that more, but I want to hear from you. Like, what do you think are the impacts of stress on people? Oh, I think it, well, every, as we know, everybody's constitution is different. So it impact, you know, in uh, Chinese medicine, as we know that, anything can affect anything, right? So stress, depending on where you decide to hold the stress, is going to either impact your, your lower back or TMJ is a big one, right? People grind their teeth. It's where you're going to hold the stress is where you're going to have a problem. It's really pretty simple. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think in, in terms of fertility, actually, interestingly enough, um, uh, what I see, because actually when I, when I decided to go into acupuncture, fertility was a big thing. And as you can imagine, it was something that uh, was so helpful for me. So I really helped a lot of women. And most women, I would say, come back when they were going through infertility. Uh, one of the things that really impacted them was worry. I mean, that's the emotion that I felt that really, they were just worried, really anxious. That's what I saw a lot, you know, in Manhattan, everybody's anxious, right? And anxiety and um and uh worries stomach spleen right that's mm-hmm. middle jowl so you really i mean for the and and that's perfect for fertility or not perfect fertility because when you're anxious you're you just tighten up you tighten up your whole abdomen your lower abdomen so what's in there you've got your ovaries you've got your uterus you've got your kidneys all of those organs that are really important for fertility so one of the big things that i do is well just on a physical level, just opening up that whole lower abdomen, right? Mm -hmm. Opening up the side channels, just giving that breath is incredible. I think what it's done to Philly, you know, um, that that's what I see mostly. I I'd say 75% of the people that I've treated over the years, just doing that alone has been, um, they get pregnant. Yeah. You you make a good point because, you know, if we were just to think about it, like you say at like a physical physiological perspective, like if we're tightening up, the circulation is hampered and, and, you know, we've seen studies show that, that increasing circulation in the reproductive system can be incredibly helpful for improving fertility outcomes. I myself, um, I had actually a regular period for all my teenage years, despite having some ovarian cysts. And then in my twenties, I was, uh, I was working three jobs while finishing Chinese medicine school. And then I decided to sell all my belongings and go to Asia. Cause I didn't, I didn't know when I was going to come back. So I figured I'd just unload all my stuff and my body blew a fuse. Like I, I had gone from a 28 day cycle to, I stepped off the plane in China and I didn't get another period for another year or something like that. Like my, my ovaries just shut down. Uh, and I was just doing an interview with a doctor, uh, prior to, to our session. And, you know, we were talking about how there are things that can literally make the ovaries go to sleep. And the stress response, like if you're going to, if you're going to cut something, the function of something, you're going to cut an unessential system, the reproductive system, 
it's an unessential system. It's essential for furthering the human race, but it doesn't keep us alive. It's not like our heart beating, right? So if our body is under stress, it only makes sense that um, something's going to suffer. Um, and besides, you know, our sleep and tension and things like that, the, the reproductive function can literally be suppressed from the stress response. Uh, so, so what you say about opening it up and kind of accessing it, it makes sense that it could change the physiology. And I think that's something that people aren't putting together is, is, and, and I think that the medical profession isn't putting it together yet because I was just having a, a conversation with a, another doctor who had, who admitted that he believes that acupuncture is good for stress, but he would not agree that it's good for fertility. And I'm like, well, if acupuncture is good for stress and you know that, then wouldn't it just be indirectly beneficial to fertility? Um, so what do you think about the fact that the, you know, the sort of the population at large is not so much connecting stress with the physiological effects of it? Yeah, I think you've said the magic word. They're not making the connection. Yeah. They're not doing A plus B equals C or one plus two equals three. If, if stress affects the cortisol, right? Let's just even just talk about the cortisol. Stress increases cortisol. It stays in our body. We remain in that fight or flight. And we know that when we, our body remains in that level, then all the other hormones, including reproductive hormones, right? Your FSH, your estrogen and progesterone, all go haywire. I mean, they've shown that FSH goes, you know, through the roof when you have high stress, which impacts fertility. So you've got to take it a step further. You can't just stop and say, okay, well, yes, stress constrains. And when it constrains, what happens at a, as a cascade, as a domino effect? You know, you've got to go down, you know, downstream or upstream, but you've got to go downstream from there. You can't. And I actually, as you know, that's what's so great about Chinese medicine. We look at the body as a whole. Mm -hmm. And not only the body, but we look at the environment, everything mm -hmm. that factors in. Mm -hmm. um, so absolutely. absolutely. Just like connect the dots. Yeah, the, the holistic viewpoint. Uh, I was I was speaking with uh, one of the colleagues at Eterna, Andrea Vanelli, uh, and and we were you know speaking about the the Western view of the body of, of the you know the scientific sort of medical paradigm and how it's compartmentalized. Like you have mm -hmm. you know the pulmonologist for your lungs, and you have the reproductive endocrinologist for your ovaries and uterus, and you have the gastroenterologist for your GI system, and and it's so different for us because we're like, okay, so the lungs and the digestive system, you know, they are very related, they're connected. And if you have a pathology in one, you're likely to have a pathology in another. Uh, you know, if your nervous system is affected, it's very much going to be affecting all of the system. So I think it's hard in our profession to understand the more compartmentalized mechanistic model of medicine that breaks everything down into parts because all of the parts are communicating with each other. And, you know, from the perspective of what you do, if you can reset the nervous system and um, the spiritual and emotional body, that can actually be at the root of fixing everything else. I, I agree with you. And I actually think that's where I took it to the next level. I think for, you know, the years that I was practicing, I was clearing stress in the body and in doing that, you are actually changing neurological pathways because we know that stress resets that, right? So we're, and it creates alternate pathways. So we can actually modulate that on the physical, on the physical plane, which I think is so important. And that's what I did all these years, but I was frustrated because clients kept coming back. Mm -hmm. They would feel great, but then they would come back even a few months later and some either the issue would rear its ugly head or it would, or something else would happen. And I said, okay, I need to get beyond just that physical layer, which is what I experienced. What are they doing on, after they leave my office that continues to perpetuate it and keep them in that cycle? And that's when you have to really marry the mental, emotional, and spiritual aspect of it, because it has to all be aligned because otherwise then we're using our body as a punching bag. Totally. Totally. And I am I'm definitely guilty of that. So what would you say were kind like would be some of the more common things that people are doing when they leave your office to sabotage themselves? Um, perfect thing is they would go home and let's say somebody was really angry. 
right? We clear the liver, especially in that diaphragm, right? I would even teach them a few breaths to kind of clear and shift the energy. But they would go home and their, I don't know, husband would anger them or their kids and, and they were just frustrated and then their anger would continue to build up and they weren't processing their emotions, right? And mm. they're like just lashing out at their kids. Um, and partially, I think a part of that also is that they were tired. Mm-hmm. They were, they just gave too much of themselves mm-hmm. and they didn't realize that. So, so totally. what's part of the work is not to not get angry. You're going mm-hmm. to get angry. Mm-hmm. Part of that work is your problem is that you're overextended. Yes. Yes. Right. That's right? so insightful. Yeah. Like, why are you so intolerant? Right. Like if you're exactly. overextended, no, like you're, that's what it's going to be. Um, like I think about um, the times that I'm tired. I, I'm a monster. <laughs> I have no control. <laughs> oh, so, you know, I guess it's, it's, it's really addressing some of the underlying lifestyle factors um, that are contributing to being spread thin. But that's such a, such a good point that, you know, if you're not so spread thin, if you're not overextended, you're going to be more able to, to process motion, emotions healthfully. So where, what, are some tips that you could impart to our listeners in terms of, you know, where they could start to focus on things to improve their emotional health and their stress response? I think the number one thing, honestly, is to slow down. Mm -hmm. We just need to slow down. Mm -hmm. And how do you go from 100 miles an hour down to 20? Right. It is. Yeah. And there is, yeah, you can put on the brakes really, you know, really hard, but that's tough. Mm -hmm. So it really has to be done over time. So in that example, when you say, I've just, I've, I've stressed myself so thin. Mm -hmm. So most of the, in those cases, you're not going to then say, okay, I want to keep at this rate. How do I add more energy to be able to sustain that? That Mm -hmm. is not the answer. Not, not the answer. The answer is to breathe, slow down and say, what can I eliminate Mm -hmm. from my life right now Mm -hmm. that doesn't keep me at a hundred? and brings me down to 75 miles an hour. Yeah. Exactly. And that is Great. the breath work. Mm-hmm. And that is getting back in touch holistically yeah. and learning about yourself. Yeah, it's so, it's so good. And I, I imagine this is, I, I, wanna, I wanna definitely have our listeners hear about the work that you do with people in more detail. Um, but it sounds like just from what you just said, it's even just helping them find their center and find space within their, themselves to even identify to get clarity on you know what they could simplify how they can slow down because when you're on the hamster wheel and you're go go going uh, it's really hard to get perspective on what you can eliminate like how you can change your life you're just you're stuck in this like perpetuating like we talked about earlier pattern Um, and it's like how do you get off how do you get off the hamster wheel so how do you work with your patients uh, in, in, in helping them to, to get a better balance in their life and, and achieve a more um, healthy stress response and healthy emotional and spiritual balance? Yeah, so I tried to do that in my office and I realized that wasn't, you know, <laughs> that didn't work out too well. So I actually developed a program. I developed a program called Heal From Within and it's um, pretty comprehensive. It's nine weeks where we have to break your patterns. We have to help you to break your pattern, slow down. We do Qigong together. And then there's a lot of philosophical things about understanding energy, right? Because that's mm-hmm. actually a big thing is to understand how powerful energy is, how it works in the world, how we're basically going to model ourselves after nature, mm-hmm. because that's what Chinese medicine is, right? Mm-hmm. Chinese medicine is all about modeling ourselves after nature. And I now help people do that in a lifestyle basis. We slow down and then truthfully the the honest answer is what happens after that is that they just get back in touch with their themselves and they their own strength because now they're balanced and they can see what works in their life and what doesn't mm-hmm. that's so important mm-hmm. one of the biggest problems with stress christina is that people feel helpless mm-hmm. right they don't know they're just like i don't know what to do like you said like how do i break that pattern we've gotten so entrenched we don't even know how to get out of it. Mm -hmm. So this, and that's what this program does. It helps us, you know, rebalance ourselves so that we can get introspective Mm -hmm. and that, and then it's amazing because once you do that, the physical layer, just think about the tension that you release. Just think about like when you come, 
home and you're just like, okay, I have to get dinner on the table for my kids and then I have to help them do their homework. I mean, I've been there, right? And I have to, you know, think about their play dates for tomorrow and you're, you're strapped. But mm -hmm. think about it in that moment where you can just take a couple of breaths, breathe in and go, oh, okay, you know what? Today I'll just order in mm -hmm. <laughs> and not feel bad about it. Yeah. I'm just going to order in. <laughs> right one simple little it. thing yeah, <laughs> yeah. That, that, and that's true it's just like that's that's just something that you can take off your plate because I part of it exactly you know with the population that we deal with too um is the perfectionism I'm gonna have everything perfect we're gonna eat the perfect thing I'm gonna structure the kids days the perfect way I'm gonna structure my day the perfect way I'm gonna get my work at it I'm gonna do this I'm gonna do that and 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 then it's like the joy is sucked out because there's no space, it's all rushing. And, and I have lived this way for many years. It's only more recently that I was like, I'm always stressed out. I, I cannot keep living this way. So I just kind of, there are some days where if I feel the stress mounting, I just stop. I'm like, okay, so I'm just gonna take the rest of the day off and all of these people texting me, calling me and emailing me. I am sorry. Um, I will get to you when my clarity and balance is restored because we don't operate well. We're not operating at our utmost potential uh, when we're in that state. Also, I want to take your program. It sounds amazing. <laughs> um, so where can our listeners find you and, and this program? Oh, I'm all over the place. So I'm Sue Ping Heal from Within. It's S-I-U. P I N G Hill from Within uh, dot com. I'm on Facebook, same name, Instagram, LinkedIn. Um, yeah, so great. Well, I'm going to be posting all of the these links and and information in our show notes and in the newsletter. And loved having you here today. This has been such a great topic and one that needs more attention. And I think the the idea of a nine week program is such a nice thing to be with others on the journey and share insights and and you know benefit from your wisdom and and both personal and professional experience so thank you so much for sharing with us today thank you so much Christina and um yeah and it is nice because it is a group and you're in with everybody else we're all doing the same thing and we're all struggling with the same thing and that's why it's you know it's really nice to have that support thank you so much for having me you are just such an amazing practitioner um, I've really just enjoyed getting to know you. Likewise, likewise. And I, and I hope that, uh, you know, after this chat, then we'll be able to have people have access to some of the amazing magic that you are sharing. So thanks again. And okay. 